Hey everybody, I'm Bo Moore and I'm joined once again by Jason Ronald, one of the lead engineers of the Xbox Series X. Jason, thanks for joining me again. Hey Bo, it's great to be back with you. So this week we are talking about the Xbox Velocity architecture. Uh, tell me just what does that mean, Jason? Sure. You know, when we said design of the Xbox Series X, we really focus on analyzing every part of the end-to-end -end ecosystem in the, in the Xbox Series X. So one of the things that we did is we went out and reached out to our first party and our third party developers to really get feedback from them on what they were looking for in a next generation console. And one of the things that became very clear early on is we were really focused on how do we revolutionize and reinvent the traditional IO infrastructure and that resulted in the Xbox uh, Velocity architecture, which we really think of as the ultimate solution for game asset streaming. And it comprises four major components. First is the custom NVMe SSD drive. Second is our dedicated hardware decompression blocks. Third is a brand new direct storage API. And fourth is sampler feedback streaming, which really brings all four uh, of those components together. So that is a lot of technical jargon. So let's uh, break these elements down one by one. So start off, let's tell me about the SSD. Sure. So the custom NVMe SSD at the heart of the Xbox Velocity architecture is really the foundation that really enables all of these next gen capabilities that we're talking about. It delivers 2.4 gigabytes per second in raw IO throughput. And that's really just the foundation that everything builds on top of. So what is different, if anything, about this SSD in the Series X as compared to current top of the line PC SSDs? We really designed this SSD to really focus on sustained, consistent performance and ultra low latency so that we can stream assets off of the NVMe SSD as quickly as possible into memory to make it fully available to the game when it needs it. Now, as I understand it, a lot of PC SSDs, uh, one of the problems they have is they tend to overheat. Uh, what is, at least when they're having that really sustained throughput, what's the Series X SSD doing to prevent that kind of problem? So it's a combination of some of the design choices we actually made in the hardware, things like ensuring that we had the optimal design for cooling to keep the drive performing at its highest uh, uh, capability, at the same time too, there's also custom firmware built on top of it as well, so that we have much more control over how the drive is actually being used, both at the system level as well as at the title level. Cool. Uh, so up next, the we have hardware accelerated decompression. What does that mean? Sure. So game assets are often compressed to make the assets fit better on disk or to minimize your download sizes. And one of the things that's really important is that when you're actually decompressing the assets, if you're to do it with software alone, it would take a number of the Zen 2 CPU cores in the Xbox Series X, and that would actually take it away from allowing the game developers to fully use those the CPU cores to make the game better. So what we did is we added dedicated hardware decompression blocks so that we can actually offload the decompression while it's happening in real time so that the game can just focus on making their game great and then we can handle all the low level details of actually getting the data off of the ssd decompress it and put it into memory as quickly as possible next is direct storage api tell me about that the traditional file IO APIs were actually written more than 30 years ago. And obviously technology has fundamentally changed since that time with the invention of SSD technology. So one of the things that we did is we really looked at how games would take advantage of this new uh, technology that we're delivering. And we realized that we needed to give developers more direct low level control over how they actually use this, use this hardware. So as an example, now a developer can be much more precise in what assets they need, when they need them. They can manage their eye operations. So if you think about it, if I'm in a large open world, if I teleport from one part of the map to the next part of the map, the developer has a lot more control of how quickly they can stream those assets in so that you have a fast travel system that's just that fast. 
You also, when you think about, as you know, you're traveling through a world, you don't want to have things like pop in uh, where, you know, an objects or textures start streaming in and you can kind of see that visual difference. So with the direct storage API, developers have that fine grain control to make sure that developers, or I'm sorry, the gamers get that truly immersive experience, no matter what kind of game they're playing. Awesome. So you said that sampler feedback streaming is what sort of brings it all together. So how does that work? Yes, yeah, sampler feedback streaming is one of the things that we're really excited about. One of the things that we did with the Xbox One X is we actually had custom hardware added to the Xbox One X so that we could actually inventory how games actually use memory, how assets are actually loaded into memory. And one of the things that we learned is that there's a large amount of data that's actually being loaded into memory today that is actually not actually used in an individual frame. So as an example, a developer might actually have to load an entire texture into memory, even though they only need to use a very small portion of it. So with that knowledge, what we actually did is we added customizations to the GPU, as well as to the Xbox Velocity architecture that allows a developer to only load the portions of a texture that they actually need right before that they need it. So what this does is it actually acts as an effective multiplier on the amount of physical memory that's in the box, as well as because you only have to load portions of textures in memory at any time, developers get that much more efficiency and throughput from the actual NVMe, NVMe SSD. So it overall acts as an overall multiplier of what a developer can actually do well beyond the actual raw hardware specifications. So from a developer standpoint, do these things need to be taken into account during development or can developers pretty much just keep doing what they've been doing and they'll just work? So for some, for some of the features of the Xbox Velocity architecture, all games just naturally benefit. As an example, earlier this year, we showed the dramatic reduction in load times for backwards compatible titles. Clearly they were written before the Xbox Velocity architecture exists, and they're just taking full advantage of that increased uh, IO throughput that we have with the Xbox Series X. Then you look at features like direct storage and sampler feedback streaming, those are areas that developers can customize their game and build their game around to take full advantage of those capabilities. And we're really excited by what we've already seen from some of the early titles taking advantage. But we do think this is going to be an area where you're going to see continued innovation over the generation. So we're really excited about the future of this space. So I think the big question for me and for a lot of our readers is what does this actually mean for the gamer? So from a gamer's perspective, this ultimately means, you know, the virtual elimination of load times or much richer, more vibrant, more diverse um, open world games. You know, if you think about open world games, it's really about the diversity and the density of the content. So now I can show all of that content in and in time to just keep me immersed into the actual experience. And uh, so what does this mean for games that are also developed on PC, as will be the case for most, if not all, first party Xbox games and for the Series X games that are being played on current gen Xbox hardware? Uh, if a game is designed with the velocity architecture in mind, what does that mean for when it's being played on those other platforms? So. With the Xbox Velocity architecture, many of the same technology and the same concepts that we're innovating on with Xbox Series X, we're bringing those to the PC space as an example. So I mentioned direct storage. Direct storage is a new capability that's part of the DirectX 12 Ultimate family. So those same APIs, those same capabilities are coming to PC. Similarly, as things continue to advance in the PC space, we'll continue to look for opportunities to bring that into the console ecosystem as well to make it easier for developers so they have one set of capabilities across whether it's PC or console so that they can really just focus on making their game great. Awesome. Well, as a primary PC player, I'm, that sounds great to me. So for more on the Xbox Series X, uh, thank you, Jason, again for joining me and keep it right here to IGN.